What's up, y'all? It's your boy Sincere B with Monday Night Raw, February 10th, 2014. My review on this. We got a lot to cover. It's going to be a long video, man. A lot went on this Monday night. So, uh, first of all, Betty White was the guest star. She walked out with the show at the beginning of the show, with the big show at the beginning of the show. Of course, everybody with Chad and Betty White. I thought it was great to see her there. Uh, the big show asked Betty White, hey, what are we going to do tonight? And Betty White said, we're going to kick some ass. Then the crowd went crazy when she said that. Then, of course, the party poopers came out. Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Now, in the background, you can still hear everybody chanting CM Punk. Of course, we all know that they're not really um, pushing out any CM Punk stuff. Uh, rumors was they took some signs away from people who had CM Punk signs up before. Um, they still kind of selling the merchandise a little bit, but not, not really advertising CM Punk. So, man, I hope that's, that situation gets uh, resolved. Uh, but... Uh, what Stephanie was saying, like I said uh, a couple nights ago, that she was saying that how she told Randy that anybody possibly could be um, the face if you don't get his act, uh, act together. And one person that could be the face of the company could be Daniel Bryan. I thought she was lying. You know what? She was lying. So now Triple H kind of twisted it around and said, well, you know, we did say Daniel may be coming, but we also could make Christian or anybody else that's going to be an elimination chamber. So you can see they kind of reneged on that. So Stephanie went on to try to tell Randy to go back to the locker room. Um, because he came out there complaining to them and everything. He's, but he said he wanted to apologize. He started kissing the ass. Uh, but, of course, Steph didn't believe him. Uh, he went on and said that he wanted to be the man, the face. He wanted to have his face on all the product. Want to be on all the commercials and blah, 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 blah. So, as he's saying this, see Daniel Bryan comes out. Now, he gets to the ring and he starts talking noise about Stephanie also and kind of pissed Stephanie off and told Brian, you know what? From now on, anybody in the back who want to talk to us, do not interrupt us anymore. You need to make an appointment. So, <laughs> Daniel Bryan said, yeah, whatever. But he was still mad about what Kane's choke slam the other day. So, uh, he he said he wanted to get Kane in the ring tonight and told Steph she, that they should make a match with him and Kane. Steph said, no, we can't do that because Kane ain't here. Kane is on administrative leave for one week because of the actions he took last week. So, Daniel Bryan said, ah, whatever. So, Stephanie got a little more upset and said, you know what, but since you are such in a bad mood, pretty much, we're going to also do you a favor. We're going to give you the night off also. Of course, Daniel didn't like that and the crowd didn't like that. But they said he was um, not suspended, but they gave him the night off. And then that was pretty much the end of that first segment. The first match came up with Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes, and Gold Dust versus the Wyatt family. This match was pretty much insane. A lot of action. Um, uh, again, a lot of high flying, a lot of power moves. The Wyatt family did end up winning. And man, 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 man. Bray, uh, Bray Wyatt caught Rey Mysterio with that uh, Sister Abigail move. From the ropes, and I ain't never seen this. Now he's always done that move when a person's already down. He picks him up, kiss the forehead, then execute it. But this time Ray was going off the ropes, and he caught Ray with that thing so fast. My thing broke Ray neck, man. <laughs> It was devastating. So, this was a great, great match. Uh, really excited. Really kept the crowd into it. So, that was a good job on that match. So, after that match, Renee Young interviewed The Shield. She was talking to uh, uh, Roman Reigns about how well he did in the Royal Rumble. Then she turned to Dean Ambrose and said, Hey, no, man, people are spreading rumors that you're really not defending your belt. So Dean got a little bit defensive and was like, uh, What you want me to do? Pull fighters out of the hat? It takes paperwork to do that. <laughs> so really just comping out. So uh, Roman Reigns looked at him and said, Hey, man, what kind of champion are you going to be? Can I kind of rub uh, Dean the wrong way? So what Dean said, well, I tell you what, to prove myself, I'm going to have an open challenge to anybody in the back. Anybody in the back who wants this belt, come and fight me tonight. So that's end of that right there for now. Uh, and then it was twist over to some divas. They was all hanging out with Betty White. 
Of course, Vicky walked up and pushed everybody to the side and told Betty White, hey, one cougar to another, because you know she a cougar, that she would be glad to have her on the show. Of course, the new age outlaw stepped up in there also and kind of whispered to Betty, say, Betty, you know what? These young generation of people are planning on doing a prank on you, so you should hang out with us tonight and we'll take care of you. Let's go have some tea. <laughs> so Betty like, okay, got two, two hunks right here. I go with you. So Betty went off with the New Age Outlaws to go have some tea. We'll come back to that later. The second match was Santino versus Fandago. Fandago won that match. Of course, Santino and Emma, they're together now. I was hoping that they power walked together down her ramp. Um, and if you, you know, you might think Santino, Santino is goofy and funny. He is. But the boy got wrestling skills. Um, now, of course, during the match, the men walked out again, went to the Nelson stand, a table, got some headsets, said a few words, and walked off. I'm not sure where Miz is going with this. Miz is upset about something, but nobody know what. He says a few words and then leaves, so it's kind of odd. But anyway, uh, like I said, Fandago uh, won the match. He won by doing a, a leg drop on Satino. I didn't, I didn't like that. I thought that was kind of cheesy. For him to win, but you know, Santino always loses in some goofy way. So that match was there with all that, but Fandango did win. The next interview was Brian Saxton. I guess this is a new guy in the back. He did an interview with Seamus. Seamus was saying he was glad to be back. And he didn't mind tag teaming with Kristen tonight because even though they had a difference in the past, tonight is all about business. But of course, in the elimination chamber, things are going to change. So uh, so that was pretty much that interview. The third match was Kristen and Seamus versus the Real Americans. Uh, Seamus and Kristen did win that match. It was an okay match. Um, they did a little quick video snippet of Kristen saying that he felt like he could be the face of the company, at least of what his mother thinks. He got his black guys. Pretty weird. Um, the funny part to me is Zepp uh, caught her. I said his name right, but he's like the leader of the Real Americans. He was talking about Christian and Seamus being the non-Americans who snuck back into the WWE and now they get a chance to uh, go for the belt when they haven't been doing anything like the people in the stadium. They was in LA, you know, he referring to a lot of Hispanic people. They didn't like that. The crowd started booing them, you know, so he played the crowd really good with that. But after he says that it called them two non-Americans, he gives the mic to some sorry, yo. <laughs> you know he's not American. So that's just some classic funny shit. You got to be ready to that to really get that to find out funny. Uh, but the match was okay. Um, pretty exciting. Uh, Seamus and Cesario went to a point where they were like going elbow to elbow. And to me, it looked like a couple of elbows snuck in and like they were getting a little frustrated and threw a couple of real punches for real. That's just the way I looked at it. But it was played so well. The crowd was telling them to keep going and they kept going with the crowd. So that was cool. Um, so overall, it was a great match. Again, Kristen tried that, that stupid kill switch on Cesario, which I hate that move. It takes too long. They didn't let you know it's about to happen. Um, but Cesario reversed it. Then he threw Kristen up in the air. When Kristen came down, Cesario hit him with that big elbow. And you know what? Kristen kicked out of it. Why can that be Cesario's finishing move? Oh, so irritating. So later on, Cesario jumps on his stomach. You know how he do that stump, that stump move and got him like that. He spent Kristen eight times with the Cesario spin. Um, and then Swagger tried to get uh, Seamus in the Patriots lock. Kristen dropped the drop kick on Swagger. And then Seamus caught Swagger with the bro kick. One, two, three. It's over. So overall, it was a pretty decent match. It was cool. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was entertaining. Uh, next thing happened was the interview with Renee Young. She interviewed Cena. Um, Cena was talking about the fight he's going to have to do with Randy later on, which was the, supposed to be the main event tonight. Cena talked about the WWE Network and how he happy that all the fans supporting everything. Um, and that the match tonight between him and Randy Orton will be the match that's going to dictate their future. And he said that he's going to win this belt, and anybody that wants this belt is going to have to go through through John Cena. So uh, from there, it went to the fourth match, which was Dolph Ziggler versus Alberto Del Rio. <sighs> you know, uh, Alberto won. Um, you know, it was a short match, a short match. And I know, I, I kind of know why it was so short. But, um, you know, Ziggler tried to get the famous on Del Rio. He missed him. 
they they Rio coming with that super super kick to the foot to the side of the head. He was out one, two, three. I just hate to see that kind of uh, loss because Ziggler is such a good athlete. I wish they would give him more, but you know the storyline is going on with with Ziggler and I mean with uh, De Rio and of course after that match happened, Batista came out. Batista came out undressed, ready to wrestle. Came to the ring, spilled De Rio, threw De Rio out of the ring. Through Del Rio against the steel steps, cleared out the announcement table, and then Batista bombed Del Rio on the table. So, you know, hell, Del Rio puts Batista too far, and that's what happened. So, the match itself between Ziggler and Del Rio, I didn't like, you know, Del, Del Rio won, but then Batista came out, it kind of made everything a bit better for me, I guess. So, as Batista left, went walking in the back, Triple H pulled Batista to the side, told Batista, hey man, Things have changed around here since you left. You can't go around and just jump people like you used to. Uh, and I'm telling you this, so I'm looking out for you. So Batista kind of looked at Triple A and said, you know what? Okay, I guess things have changed around here and walked off. I took that ass. He turned Triple H, you become a little punk now. You got a little suit on. Look how you're acting, you know, because that's the way I get that. So and Triple H kind of looked at him like, whatever. And then Batista walked off. So it's going to be interesting to see how that turns over later on in the, in the future. Uh, the next thing they talked about uh, was the new inductee uh, to the WWE Hall of Fame, which was Lita. And I was really happy to see that because Lita did a lot, man. She changed the game for Divas. She looked good. She was hot. She was a good athlete. Um, and she uh, did things no other dealers were doing at that time. She was a high flyer, a risk taker. Uh, it's kind of too bad what happened to her neck. Even though she did come back and did a couple matches after that, but she was never quite the same. So I was glad to see her indicted to the uh, WWE Hall of Fame with Jake the Snake and Ultimate Warrior. Those are the three that they announced so far. So that was pretty sweet. So congratulations on that, Lita. Uh, the next thing was it kind of took you to the uh, room where Betty White and the Outlaws was having tea. So they sit down having tea, and then Betty White realized there was no lemon. She asked him, "Where the lemon at?" So of course, badass and and uh, and um, and uh, um, uh, Road Dog got into a, like a little argument about who should get the lemon. So they both leave to go get the lemon arguing. While they leaving, Betty swiss her tea with Billy Badass tea. So they come back with the name and they drink it all up. Now that's Badass drinking the tea. Betty White like, <laughs> look at it, smiling. So that happened in that. And then it goes from there to the fifth match, which was the uh, the uh, Usos versus Kirk Axel. Curtis Axel and Ryback. Uh, the Usos did win. And the uh, New Age Outlaws was ringside with Jay Bell, Michael Cole, uh, sitting there talking to him. Uh, as they were talking, you can see Billy Badass rubbing his stomach like he got the bubble guts. <laughs> and I think he was over there farting, dude. So they were laughing at him about that. Um, the match, though, was, was okay. Uh, nothing really special about this match. I like the Uso. They, they, they really, they're really good. Uh, there's one thing I thought that was pretty sweet. Um, Jay Uso was going to go over the top ropes like, like he always go over the top ropes. But in mid-air, as he was going over the top ropes, they intentionally tagged out. It was pretty sweet looking. So he jumped over the rope, kind of froze in the air, tagged, um, tagged out, finished up his move down there. And then Jimmy Uso took over and won. So it was a pin, one, two, three. So it was a pretty good, cool move that was. The match was okay. Nothing really special about that. Uh, at the end of that match, you can see Billy Guns end up running out of the <laughs> out of <laughs> out of the, out of the arena, going out to the ramp, trying to get to the bathroom, holding the back of his ass. I think he might have pooped on himself. <laughs> so the sixth match was Ambrose. That was his open challenge match. Anybody in the back could come out and challenge him. So those were in the ring waiting with the shield. And of course, tonight was the night Mark Henry returned. So Mark Henry comes out, and of course, Ambrose saw him and like, oh, put his head down. But Roman Reigns was laughing at Ambrose, like, uh-huh, what's what you going to do now? So, of course, you know, the shield was still down, and you know what was going to happen at the end of this. So, of course, Mark, Mark Henry getting there, pretty much started whooping uh, Ambrose's ass, and then finally the rest of the shield had to get in, kind of do um, uh, Mark Henry out the ring. Uh, and then Roman Reigns caught him with the spear, and then that was pretty much it. Uh, but then the, it kind of picked up again because when that match was over and the shield was leaving, 
Of course, the Y family comes out on the ramp. They comes down the ramp. So now the shield stops and come back over the black wall and gets to the side of the ring. Now it's a standoff. They stare at each other and the crowd's going crazy. And I'm kind of like getting excited too. So finally, the uh, Y family comes to the ring um, and they both now at the end of the ring and face to face. Finally, the shield gets up into the ring. So do the Wyatt family. And then Roman Reigns get into the ring. And then Bray Wyatt starts to get into the ring and backs up. I'm like, oh, man. And everybody, the whole crowd, like, no. Nah. So, of course, the Wyatt family didn't go through with it. They backed out and left. But I want to see that match. So bad right now to go down. But we have to wait for that to come come through. So uh, they ended that. Next thing, they kind of gave a little uh, shout out to Wiz Khalifa. He was out there in the audience. So that was pretty cool. And then they talked about Black History Month. This is a Black History Month. They gave a shout out to the Hall of Fame of Bobo Brazil, which I didn't know who Bobo Brazil is. I went and looked him up and I saw a little history on him. Um, he uh, His move was the Coco butt, was like a head butt. Um, had a good good career, and actually he was a mentor for Rocky Johnson, which is The Rock's father. So I thought that was pretty cool information I didn't know about. So they gave a shout out to him. So that was a good little history moment for me. The seventh match was the Bella Twins and Cameron. Uh, uh, of course, Naomi's not there. Remember last week she took that knee from Asana, and I thought that was a mistake. And yeah, it was a mistake by Asana. She ended up getting a. Uh, um, uh, uh, Naomi ended up getting a, I think it was a bruised eye socket. Ooh, ouch. Um, good thing about them cracked a, a fraction. So she wasn't there, uh, but it was just camera bride. Still the Bella Twins versus AJ, Asana, and then um, Alicia Fox. It was a pretty good match. Um, camera did really good, and and, I, and, I, and I'm not speaking on Bella Twins because I have already, we already know the improvement, but Cameron was kind of sloppy to me at for a while, but you can tell she's putting in the work, she's working hard, and the wrestling got really, really better, so it was a pretty good match overall, of course, Cameron dropped a nasty DDT on Oksana, and that's how we got the win, so it was a pretty good match overall, um, then they went to say John Cena made his 400th, 400th Make-A-Wish on Monday, he is the number one wish grantor in history for Make a Wish. 400, man. That's amazing, man. Um, nobody got even close to that. So that's, that was great news right there. Also, they did another preview of Alexander Rus. How do you say it? Rusev. I say it right. Um, this, dude, this dude looks serious. He with his girl, uh, Lena. That's her name. But this guy looks serious. I'm, and I haven't watched him wrestle yet. Um, he's on NXT, I guess. Um, I haven't seen what he does. I'm kind of excited to see what this guy going to bring. Cause he looks huge. And what kind of moves he going to bring. Man, anybody with a long kilt dress got to be badass, right? Yeah, I think so too. Um, the next thing was... Kane came out, which he wasn't even supposed to be there, according to Steph and Triple H. But he came out, got in the ring. He said he was on a week of admin leave because of what he what did what he did you know, last week. He started to apologize, but then Daniel Bryan came out, which he was supposed to be gone too because they gave him the night off. But he rushed the ring, got into the ring, went fight with Kane. They got into it. Kane almost got the choke slam on him, but of course Daniel said he can't reverse out of anything. Reversed it. Got King out of the, uh, Kane out of the ring. Kane would run through the audience, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so Daniel Bryan kind of got a little bit of revenge for being choke slam, but not really that much. But it's a start. The eighth match was the, the uh, John Cena versus Randy Orton. That was the last match of the night. Um, the match was up and down for me. When the match first started, I actually dozed off a couple times. It was so boring to me. But then it picked up kind of in the middle. Uh, where it was kind of playing the crowd, they were hitting each other back and forth. The crowd was getting kind of into it, and then they started reversing. They they started to uh, reverse the, each other moves. You know, um, uh, Randy Orton caught Cena with the RKO. Cena kicked out. Uh, Cena caught Randy Orton um, with the attitude adjustment. Uh, Randy kicked out. Uh, and they finally at the very end, uh, and I, I was really surprised. Just Cena went to the top rope. Came down with a leg drop from the top rope on the back of Randy's neck. Caught him with the attitude adjustment again, and it was over one, two, three. So I really uh, surprised what Gina, what John Cena did, but I'm still boring against um, Randy Orton, man. And I know that's his role, that's his script to be that kind of person, but I'm kind of tired of that. I want to see the boy do some stuff, and I just walk around and smile and, and not do anything. To me, he makes the match boring, and at one time, you can hear the crowd even saying boring. So I wish they would go ahead and do something with Randy. Um, 
Maybe it's time to get a new face. I don't know. But that pretty much sums everything up. So it was, it was a lot of things going on with Raw. Overall, Raw was pretty good. My favorite match was the very first for Raymond Studio, Cody Rhodes, to go dust and the Wise family. That was my favorite match. My favorite move of the night was when Bray Wyatt caught uh, Rey Mysterio coming off the rope and hitting him with that sister Abigail. That was the devastating move. So that's my favorite move of the night. So down below, let me know what your thoughts on Raw. Did you like it? What was your favorite match? Your favorite move? And one other thing too, when the WWE Network start, and it's gonna be started before WrestleMania, I wanna do a live stream where we're gonna be watching Raw together. Now, I'm, I'm not streaming Raw, don't get it, get it twisted. You're gonna have your own view in there, but we can sit there and discuss it while it's live. I think it's gonna be pretty fun to do, so stay tuned for that. Um, and again, uh, leave comments down below. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please share it. And if you have a subscribe, go ahead and subscribe because that helps you know when I do new videos. It's your boy with Sincere B. I see you back on Thursday when I upload my next video for Wednesday night main event. And, oh, excuse me. I'm going to try to find some juicy rumors too. So stay tuned for that. It's your boy Sincere B. I'm out of here. Peace.